2021 in Haridwar responsible for the second wave of COVID-19 in India? What about the election rallies? Are they responsible? Such questions have been repeatedly raised in certain sections, which incidentally are the same set of people who are accused of using the toolkit for communications. But what is the truth? Today, in this video using data, analytics, graphs and charts, we will try to conclusively answer both the questions. I am Richa and this is New India Junction. First, the Kung. Let us look at this graph. It is an eye-opener, something which will answer all questions without debate. Back in January 2021, India was reporting as low as 9,102 new cases. On January 26, Kerala reported over 6,000 cases and Maharashtra over 2,000 cases. A majority of districts with over 100 new cases were, as the numbers suggest, from Maharashtra and Kerala, states that contributed almost 70% to India's caseload. Within a month, cases had begun to rise. 16,577 cases were reported in India on February 26. The same states now had an even larger number of districts reporting more than 100 new cases daily. But this time, Maharashtra had overtaken Kerala with a total of 8,702 cases reported on the day in question. Over 50% of India's total cases and Kerala, 3,677 cases. When combined, these two states now made up over 72% of India's caseload. Remember, there was no kumbh at this time, yet the second wave was on its way. This brings us to the kumbh and assembly elections. February 26 being the dates when the schedules were announced for the polls. Interestingly, Tamil Nadu, one of the five states that would go to polls, was already seeing a spike in cases with 467 cases reported in 24 hours. Tamil Nadu also happens to share a border with Kerala. Just over a month later, on March 26, the number of districts reporting over 100 cases had risen to 89. With no concentration seen around Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Assam or West Bengal, Maharashtra and Kerala on the other hand had almost all their districts on that list. Karnataka that shared a border with Maharashtra reported over 2,500 cases on March 26. Remember, the Kumbh Mela had not started yet and these were states where no elections were being held. Still, the number and rate of infections was rising swiftly. What could have counted to this? On this day, Maharashtra reported a whopping 35,952 cases of the total 59,118 cases in India. States of Maharashtra Punjab, Karnataka and Kerala. These four states combined accounted for close to 73% of India's daily caseload. None had elections, none had kumbh. This itself should be enough to demolish the argument that kumbh caused the second wave. Case closed. The second wave was truly on its way now by end of March 2021, when the kum had not even begun. Would it not be correct to say that this second wave that was brewing unchecked in Maharashtra, Kerala and later Chhattisgarh since January eventually spread to other states and engulfed the entire country? I cannot see the data providing any other conclusion if you have, do let me know in the comments. Let us look at another data point. If the Mahakumbh Mela in Haridwar had caused the second wave, positivity trends from Uttarakhand would be higher than other areas in the country, right? But this too is not the case. When compared with districts like Nagpur and Nashik in West, We 
Visakhapatnam in south and Raipur in the east, the trends are absolutely the reverse. Positivity rate in all the regions far off from Haridwar was much higher than Haridwar ever reached, much before Kum and remained the same way. But what about elections? Case positivity across India had doubled from 2% in February to 10.4% during the first week of April. This was much before the Kumbh Mela or the beginning of election rallies. In fact, during this time, cases rose continually in Maharashtra, Kerala and Chhattisgarh. Let us look at this graph again and see which states contributed how much to total India caseload before April. In fact, Assam, the site of election rallies during March, is nowhere to be seen when we take into account states with most infections. Something else was happening, unchecked. Farmer protests. What about that? What explains the rise in infections in Delhi? Protesters from Punjab and parts of Haryana have camped at the national capital's borders since November 2020. Look at the rise in cases in Punjab and Haryana since end of February and early March. Surely, no election or kumbh contributed to this. So what could have? This trend that began in Punjab late in February spilled over onto Haryana in March and then arrived in Delhi in April 2021. In April, New Delhi saw an exponential rise in new infections that went well above 25,000 on some days. None of these places had kumbh or election rallies. Numbers from Punjab reveal another facet. First, a drop in cases by October 2020 and then followed by a swift rise in November 2020 when the protests began. This coincides with a drop in the number of tests being conducted. The trend continued till early March, but when more tests were done, the positivity rose almost exponentially. Can there be any other link between what happened in Punjab and Delhi's critical condition? Well, yes, the alarming yet distinct link is the number of instances where the new COVID variant B1.1.7 was spotted in these states. Punjab had 516 cases and Delhi 482. Finally, let us look at this graph one more time. See the red districts and the red states in January end, larger number in February end and still larger in March end. All are in the same region. Kerala prominent in January end, Maharashtra and Kerala in February end, Maharashtra, Kerala, Chhattisgarh, Punjab and some other districts in March end. This is where the second wave began, not because of Kum, not because of election rallies. But just to satisfy the curious ones, here is one more graph till 19th May. Even after the Kumbh has ended and 20 days into May, the Kumbh region of Uttarakhand is not the spreader or the highest caseload region. It is still other states. Finally, let us ponder on this. When faced with mismanagement at local levels that may very well have caused a national crisis, it is easy to shed accountability and shift the blame. Even international media wasn't far behind. Images from the irreplaceable cultural assemblage, which was reduced to a bare symbolic gathering this year, that too with COVID safety protocols, were often seen with headlines calling it a super spreader. Those who indulged in this propaganda should introspect.